Welcome again to Asian Online Top Watch, where you'll get the juiciest information in the market. I'm Jessica Janis, and today I've invited a special guest, Miss Li Ting, Marketing Director of the highly innovative and successful Chinese online company, Baidu. She will be sharing with us more about Baidu on behalf of Baidu's marketing team, which consists of Miss Shastria, Miss Yun Tian, and Mr. Eugene. So welcome, Miss Li Ting. Thank you for having me here. It is an honor for me to be on this show, representing my team. I look forward to answering any of your questions, and I hope by the end of the show, all of you guys will have a better grasp of what Baidu is all about. Okay, so let's get started. So I believe that many of you guys have heard of Baidu before. Basically, Baidu is the largest Chinese language internet search provider, helping users to find information online, including web pages, news, images, documents, and multimedia files. Headquartered in Beijing, Baidu operates in China, the US, Cayman Islands, Hong Kong, and Japan. Baidu has become increasingly profitable over the years with an increase of 42.9% in revenue and 7.7% increase in net profit. So, Miss Niting, could you tell us more about how Baidu attained its success? So, as we know, to achieve success, a business ought to have few competitive advantages, which are advantages that a firm has over its competitors, which allows the business to achieve higher sales and margin. Similarly, Baidu has several competitive advantages against its rival. So, let me first ask you a question. When, when you have been accustomed to using a particular search engine, do you really bother switching over to another engine? Well, no, I don't think so. I mean, I would be accustomed to the format, layout and everything, so I doubt I would be able to change these habits overnight. Yes, exactly. So this brings me to my first point. One of Baidu's competitive advantage is its first mover's advantage. Founded in 2000, Baidu was one of the first few search engines in China, and thus, it gained a first mover's advantage which allows us to benefit from high switching costs. As users have already been accustomed to one search engine and turn to use it by default. Furthermore, Baidu has also a strong collaborative network. Baidu has collaborated with network carriers such as China Mobile to pre install its search services and has also collaborated with smartphone manufacturers such as Dell and Chan Hong to pre install Baidu E as the operation system targeting both the high and low end markets in China so as to increase the number of people utilizing Baidu as their default search engine. With this high volume of traffic, Baidu is able to better serve the needs of its online marketing customer looking to implement search engine marketing by providing them a far wider market reach as compared to the other search engines. I see, uh, but you know, we have heard news that there are a few threats that Baidu is facing. For example, Baidu indeed has very strong competitors like Google, Alibaba, and Chihu 360. I must say that some of these competitors have huge financial resources and long history of operation, which may give them better ability to attract and retain users in the future. Other than that, there's also the threat of mobile devices. More people are using mobile devices as opposed to personal computers. Sales of tablets are projected to increase by over 300% from 2012 to 2017. Perhaps features of Baidu services may not be optimized in some mobile devices due to compatibility issues. Furthermore, internet policies in China are still relatively new and is still evolving. Hence, doesn't this mean that Baidu has to be careful when crafting its strategy, as interpretation of internet laws still have significant uncertainty? Yes, of course! No company would be free of threats, and Baidu has definitely faced certain threats from its business environment. However, Baidu has recognized these threats and steps and had taken to adjust its business strategies accordingly. For example, as I have mentioned, we have been constantly building up on a strong collaboration network so as to mitigate the threat of increased use of mobile devices. On top of all of this, Baidu is also a very capable company and there are still opportunities for us. Just to name a few, Baidu has a strong potential for global expansion to both developing and developed countries. Baidu can expand to developing countries where internet penetration levels are still low, and this will be a great opportunity for Baidu to gain first-time users. 
Moreover, China is one of the only handful of countries where Google is not a major search engine. In fact, it is far from it, with Baidu holding a massive 83% of the search market share. As inferred from Metcalf's Law of Network Economics, we can expect Baidu to grow even larger in number of users and its level of influence. This allows an area for expansion for Western brands to target search in Baidu with their local market expertise. In fact, Baidu has struck a deal with ChamClick for its expansion in Europe. Oh, I see. So I see that Baidu has been managing threats relatively well and has been constantly looking for opportunities to expand its business operations. So, I've been curious. And I believe that all our viewers are also quite curious. So, um, how does Baidu actually manage and sustain its operations? Like, what are its strategies, revenue models or business models? Sure, let's start off by looking at Baidu's revenue model. Baidu offers a plethora of free internet-based products ranging from search, powered by its revolutionary hyperlink analysis search technology, social products, music products, developer software, data analytics, games, and so on. Through offering these products, Baidu attracts marketers who are seeking search engine marketing allowing their advertisements to gain a wider market reach and the fees generated from marketers forms the main source of revenue for Baidu. Baidu charges its advertisers on a pay-for-placement basis with price bidding through its Phoenix Nest algorithm which uses data analytics to create a quality score. Similar to Google, Baidu is capitalizing on an increasing trend of mobile devices too. We have recently launched Baidu Maps which has captured 65% of the mobile map market share in China. Baidu's plan for the future is box computing, allowing users access to all its services and information from a single point. Wow, that certainly is impressive. Other than that, Baidu also has a few geographical strategies. We intend to expand from China to countries where English is not the dominant language. Our value proposition is to provide specialized services that are specific to the Chinese market needs and this has differentiated ourselves from our competitors. We have ventured into Japan, Egypt, Vietnam, Thailand and Brazil and plan to continue to enter more markets when more opportunities arise. Right, right. Now that we have learned about Baidu's business model, what exactly does it do? What kind of services does Baidu provide? Well, Jessica, Baidu has a very diverse operational model catering to three groups of people the users, Baidu union members as well as the developers. For users, we provide services mainly in our search products which includes video search tabs, web directory where the search engine is also customised to meet the needs of other users in different countries. And the language is adapted to the country and it provides international products and services. On top of that, we also will provide social networking services and security products for our users. Other than the general public, another group of users that Baidu cater to are companies. Baidu provides online marketing services to a variety of industries, for example, education, software, online games, and healthcare. In 2013, they have approximately 750,000 online marketing customers. Many of them are situated in China. Baidu's Pay for Placement Services, P4P in short, is a platform which allows customers to utilize the tools that's provided by the P4P to create text based descriptions of their web pages and bait on keywords that will display on their search web page information and links on a search page. This is a keyword advertising as a form of search engine marketing. One of these examples is Phoenix Nest, which aims to improve the value of spending customers on, page, on a paid search. It adopts enhanced algorithms that is capable of generating more relevant online marketing and provide customers with useful tools and information to manage their spending on a paid search and return on investments. Phoenix Nets has also a series of management tools such as the online chatting tool for better engagement between the customers and the users, mobile statistics analysis tool, and Phoenix Nets app, and many others. Next, Baidu also provides services to Baidu union members. 
This is through Audience Attributes Online Marketing Services. It allows the customers to match their promotional links or advertisements to their target audience, which has been predetermined. Blido generates revenue based on the number of clicks on a customer's links and shares this income with the union members when shared on the members' pro properties in a contract. This is a form of web analytics which involves clickstream tracking where it is able to track the clicks of the customers. Last but not least, Baidu also caters to developers and webmasters. They have several services for this group including the Baidu Open Cloud which is a platform that allows developers to effectively shift from development to distribution and from creation to gaining revenue. There's also Clouda, which is an open source project that's created by Baidu Open Cloud and worldwide developer community. Next, we also have Baidu Cloud Push, a messaging service for developers. Personal Cloud Storage, which provides cloud storage and services to individual users. For developers, Baidu also provides LBS Open Platform, which provides web, Android, or iOS-based third-party application developers with free services such as location, maps, data on local merchants, cloud storage and cloud computing of LBS data. Based on these services, developers can develop their own LBS applications. Wow, Baidu really has a lot of products and services. But of course, having a lot of good quality products doesn't really mean anything unless we can sell them. So, what kind of marketing model does Baidu have to market its own products and services? Yes, yes! Baidu has adopted the four P's Product, Place, Pricing and Promotion in this marketing strategy. Four P's? That sounds interesting. Could you elaborate more on that? Of course! For products, Baidu provides various products and services. However, the core product that we are providing is the convenience for our users and the widespread reach for our customers seeking to market themselves. The actual products that Baidu provide are our internet search engine and marketing services. Place-wise, Baidu also operates on Baidu.jp, which is a Japanese search engine that targets the Japanese market. Through globalization, Baidu is able to venture into different distribution channels. Oh, so um, how about pricing then? How does Baidu charge for its services? Does Baidu sell their services and products at a fixed price? Baidu does not have a fixed price for the product it offers. It earns its revenue on the pay for placement platform, allowing companies to bid for prime advertising space. In addition, pay per click ch charges companies only when users click on their ads. Other than that, Baidu has also actively promoted itself through marketing campaigns. This include the Chinese television advertisements, partnerships with mobile telecommunication providers, launching region-specific marketing initiatives, organizing and sponsoring discussion forums that's targeted at existing and potential customers, keeping close relationships with website owners and educating new customers with training on their search advertising capabilities, Baidu's initial public offering in 2005 and subsequent positive media coverage have very much enhanced their brand recognition. Moreover, they are continually um, implementing numerous marketing initiatives to create awareness of the mobile marketing and light app-based new marketing methods. Right, so to summarize, we can conclude that Baidu's success is because of its strong competitive advantage, its fast mover advantage as well as having strong collaboration networks with external vendors. Its large user database has also allowed analysis of big data to further develop its ancillary services to support its main revenue stream. Furthermore, with the expansion of Baidu into Japan, expansion into other international markets are foreseeable as Baidu continues its growth. Baidu's local success can also be attributed to its near-monopolistic status in China as government policies has driven out foreign competitors like Google. Therefore, taking this into account, Baidu's global expansion will be more challenging as the company does not have such advantage in other countries or markets. Ms. Li Ting, I believe that today our audience and myself has learned a lot about, about Baidu. Are there any future plans or recommendations that you have for the company? Of course! We have looked into this issue thoroughly. 
considering the competition that we face, it is important to expand its services to more countries to sustain its growth. For example, developing countries such as Egypt, Vietnam, Thailand and Brazil are good destinations as they have lower internet penetration, hence the market is less saturated. For example, in Brazil, internet penetration is only 46%. However, it is essential for Baidu to consider the intricacies of each of the countries in order to provide suitable, sustainable and profitable services for the market. Other than that, we also recommend Baidu to keep adapting to the latest trends in technology. For example, Google has kept up with the increasing trend of mobile device usage and has a bigger presence in the mobile phone market. Development of IC policies is essential in Baidu's quest of global expansion. In order to retain their influence in China and expand globally, we'll also do our best to venture into the latest IT trends. However, in doing so, Baidu must be aware that its IT policies have to be relevant to end users and should not adopt strategies that do not add value to its products. Okay, Jessica, now it's time for quiz! Are you ready to answer my questions? Sorry, what? Oh no, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> alright, alright. It was nice having you here, Miss Nithin. Thank you everyone for tuning in. We have come to the end of our show. We hope that you are now more knowledgeable about Baidu. See you next week on the next episode of Asia Top Watch. I'm your host, Jessica Janice, signing out.